Oh, look at the beautiful blue on his back. <clears throat> Plenty of wind to dig. Obviously, we've had those those high winds in the week, so there's lots of debris on the on the water. But there we go. Let's just clean him off. Just trying to show you your best, bud. There he is. Look at that. Not the biggest fish in the world, but they don't come much prettier than that, do they? That's a roach. Little roach. And the green on his back. Look at the, the way the diamond shape of his. Diamond shape of his scales and the red of his fins. Well, let's get him back. Not bad, this guy's for a Saturday afternoon session. Local to us, so. I'm finding as well, just a, just a, I don't know. This is, this, all I can say is what works for me. So if it works for me, it's more than likely going to work for other people because, as I say, I'm not the best fisherman in the world. So what I tend to do, bait out first, let it drop for a short while. The fish are looking for it, looking for it. They've been fighting over what's gone down. Then you place yours in. Mine's just following it down. It's falling at the same rate as what that stuff just fell at. There's always a fish that's missed out on the stuff that's dropped down. And there you go, they're looking for a they're looking for a bite, so has he come off? He's come off. Uh, still I'm still remembering that drop of maggots that I've put in there. So there'll be another one still waiting. He'll be looking up at the up at the sky. There we go. Oh come on Bish. A fish. There we are, fish on. Dad's got a fish on as well, but he's also battling some of the some of the debris. As I say, because of the the high winds we've had this this past week or so, oh, I've got a stick fish. Uh, there's a there's a lot of like leaves and branches and what have you got, Dad? Lovely. They're getting a bit bigger, aren't they? How many maggots you got on? Two or three? Yeah. Two. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of it floating about. I think I'm going to have to feed again. There we go. Fish on. <laughs> Zonia Baba. But this, after a, a winter of being stuck in the house, there we go, look at him. Tell me that's not a beautiful fish. It's tiny, but it's still a beautiful fish. Oh, beautiful looking little fish. Oh, the maggots are still all right. Let's put some in there, I'll put a few more this time. So we can get the bigger fish hanging about. Right. Just wait for a second for those to drop. As I say, they're competing for them underneath. Put mine in. There they are, they follow it down. There's like a mixed a mixed shoal of roach and 
and Rudd there, and there's a few. I think there's, I think from videos I've seen the way fish are, it tends to be the roach and the rudd at the top, rudd especially at the top, and then you've got a few. You got the roach at mid water and just below the rudd, and then there's fish like the bream and the and the perch underneath. That seems to have gone all the way through without being picked up. I'm just going to lift. No, fish on. Let's see what we've got here. That was a bit of a surprise, that was, guys. Whee! The Gudgeon Moister. There's a Gudgeon. First one, well, I think the first one that's actually stayed on today, I think. Beautiful fish. The cleaners of the pond. So that's what happened there. As I said, the, the bait fell all the way through to the, to the bottom. And the gudgeon were cleaning up underneath all the others. So... Uh, yeah, quite interesting. There we are. Ooh. Missed it. That looked like a bream. That looked like a bream then, Dad. Oh, the bream have moved in. As they say. Okay to use. Right, let's try one white. And one red. I've not fed maggots for a while, so let's put a few in here. I'm not taking them home this week. Because I don't know when we'll be going again. Right, so just give it a second. We'll drop mine in. Watch them fall. There we are. No worries. I'd say to it, guess it's a rod because of how quick that went. And they're competing with the uh, and they're competing with the roach at the minute. So the rod are above the roach skimming across the top trying to get the, the maggots first. It tends to be a roach if it's been in there a shorter while. I'm oh, sorry, a longer while. Let's get that out as quick as I can. Make use of the... You can also tell there's a fish there. Go on, take it. I can tell by the way the floats sort of slightly bent up. There was a fish there.
And there we go, there's a bite with fish on. Right, here we go again. It's another lovely, lovely look at him. As I was saying about the other one, if you look at the top lip, the top lip is, uh, the bottom lip protrudes, that's probably an easier way to say it. They've got a lovely shade of green on their back. That's got a little bit of a, a leech on him. Um, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful red fins. I'm just telling them about your red fins, son. Right, and there we go, let's go back. Right, now I can see that maggot's fine, so, well, stick with that maggot. As I say, this isn't precision, pre precision fishing. This is fun Saturday afternoon fishing. Just trying to get my eye back in. Yeah, keep, my eye keeps falling out, so just trying to get my eye back in. And here we go. That's just right, bang on in the right place. I'll give it 20 seconds before there's a bite. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, don't let me down. Two, two and a bit, one and a bit more. There's a fish there actually. Just take the damn thing. Uh, one and three quarters, one and a half, one and a quarter, one. Three quarters, oh, what a bugger. Maybe there's another one. Only a little bugger, but a fish is a fish is a fish. And I've got to be honest, when they're this little, they always seem to be the most pristine, beautiful little fish you've ever seen. Look at that, the perfect, perfect little fish. Uh, greedy bugger, though. There he is, back he goes, happy as Larry, I wish I was happy as Larry. Oh, we'll go for a white one this time, it's time to top up the swim as well, so I say top it up, but bear in mind we are dealing with winter. I think this copy's a little bit of overkill, to be fair. But it's just the pack that... I have different packs, you see, uh, for when I go fishing. And this is just the pack that I grabbed. There's that and, like, big hooks and all that kind of thing. But I've got a few smaller hooks, so we're all right. Probably half a dozen, a dozen, say, maggots there. There we go, bite straight away, and he's on. That actually came off, and another fish took that then, up in the water. He's gone. Is he gone? Yeah. But that's why... I have such, I've got no, no float, no, uh, no weight by the hook at all. It's all it is, is natural drop of the maggot through the water. And the weight of the maggot and the hook together keep them, uh, keep them at pace with the rest. Yeah, there's a, 
That's a boy. But yeah, the, the weight of the hook and the maggie, they f the fall that they have through the water is exactly the same as the as the free the free offerings I'm giving. To be honest, me and Dad have been out a couple of times during the winter, and we've not done very well at all, to be honest. Um, today is the first day of vaccines. The first day, really, we've seen fish moving, isn't it? And Dad's got another one, another little one. It's all been little stuff today, but like I said, we're quite happy with that. I think we are on the, if you like, the stock pond, which is full of like the smaller fish and everything. The bigger fish are on the, are in that in the lower in the lower pool. I think they call it the bottom pool, and this is the top pool. There are some half decent stuff in here. Uh, this is where I had the, the four pound eel in here, like a bloody snake it was. I don't like the look of that, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know if you've just seen the fish move out a bit further out. As I say, it's the first time we've seen fish moving at all, anywhere we've been. Obviously, we've not been far because you can't go far. There we go, fish on. Oh, the size of him. Tiny little blue there. So, uh, yeah, so still a lot of fun. And again, uh, yeah, it's another little, another little rud. And there he is, tiny little fella. It's a marvel they're giving you any indication on the on the float at all to be fair. I think there might be um we might be doing a slight change in the in the videos this year. We might be doing a few challenges and bits and bobs and trying to keep it like let's see if we can do some uh, affordable stuff that doesn't include thousands of pounds worth of poles and that kind of thing Let, maybe look at some I've got to get some new kit because I've gotten all my stuff is so old it's unreal um, there we go another one Oh my kit is so old, it's unreal. Um, as I mentioned before, my box has got to be about 15 years old. The uh, newest pole I've got is one that I won in a competition about eight years ago. So it's, you know, it's no way in this world can I be classed as A sponsored angler. Um, as I say, what I'm going to try and do is see, see what we can do about making making the best of what you've got. So, do you know what I mean? It, it's not all about thousand pound poles. It's not all about having the best seat to sit on. 
So we'll have a look at what have people got, what are people doing, see if we can get some videos off, off some uh, subscribers and stuff like that. And we'll have a look and see, see what people are doing to sort of offset the cost of uh, fishing. Oh God. If you didn't hear what he said, he said the best rod he had was a tank aerial. <laughs> I've heard it all. But uh, as I say, what we'll, what we'll try and do is uh, we'll see if we can do some money saving ideas. Um, see if we can get some ideas off some other guys. Um, and we'll try them out. We'll try them out. I mean, obviously, safety, safety wise for the fish, like the hooks have got to be the right hooks, um, and like nets have got to be the right nets. But other than that, if people have got ideas about poles that they've bought and they've found that they're uh, that they're really good, don't get me wrong. If you can afford, like, a couple of thousand pounds on a pole. Um, then fair play I mean I wish I could but I can't so you live with what you've got and this is why a lot of people don't fish the 16 metres and 20 metres because the poles that we can afford at that cost that would go that far you'd break your arm to sit there all day with a 16 metre pole unless you do what I do and I use this bump bar um, but I use that a lot purely because I need to have uh, a hand free sometimes for uh, camera work and stuff like that so and also it's more comfortable this is so comfortable I think I might swap to two maggots. After this one. There we are. Um, as I say, we're on the top pool, we're right by the car park, um, off to my right hand side, as soon as I've got this fishing on, I'll stand up, and, oh he's come off, but if you look over to there, just to show you where I'm fishing, uh, the, out, the inlet pipes there, uh, there's big stand of trees here and the car park's just off to that way, um, as I say we're on the top pool, uh, me and Dad got here first thing this morning, we're first here. Um, and to be honest, it being a Saturday, I was expecting it to be a lot busier than this. But um, I think with lockdown, most people, if they can go fishing, they go in the week. As long as you don't go far, it's still classed as your exercise and your, and like for your mental health and stuff. There we go, there's a bite on. Uh, for your mental health and things. Go on. It's only a little fish that is. Told you. Right, so I think this is a roach rather than a another rud. Let's have a look at him. Actually no. I would say. Any idea guys? You say that's a little silver broom? I'd say that's a tiny little silver broom. Baby. A baba. Yeah, as I say, I think I might try two maggots now. Maybe we can get through those. Those lit limbs. Um, I, I don't think there's any point trying any other bait other than maggots today. As I say... Um, oh, that was another thing I wanted to say. Um, yeah, thanks to the guys at 
Mel's story helped me out with the bait this morning. Um, you have to ring um, Mel's stories in Ale Zoe. So basically what it is, on most tackle shops, you give them a bell, they prepare what you want and they come to the door and that's how we did it this morning. So I got me bait and a packet of hooks. But yeah, just spare a thought, guys, for those those small independent uh, tackle shops. And if you can, try and go to them. Get your bait and stuff like that. I think it's probably 3rd of April, is it, before they can open. So, you know, they're hanging on by their teeth at the minute, I think. So, try and help them out. Another one. This one's a little bit better. There's a better bite as well. I think I might actually use the landing net for this one. I think we're on the I think we're on the last dregs of the battery guys so uh, thanks very much for watching Fish with Bish um, the GoPro session um, from uh, Brookend Pools